and welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, the only show on Indian television right now where you, the MSME, get centre stage to voice your opinions and thoughts. This is ET Now, special daily initiative to give MSMEs and entrepreneurs the opportunity to be front and centre on every industry that matters to you on Influencer Tonight. We're bringing a conversation with CEG Test House on Leader Focus, which will be a segment on the construction industry. Just stay tuned. Tonight we bring you the second part of a series of interviews we did on ground from Jaipur. The Leaders of Tomorrow Roadshow goes to 20 cities and towns across India to connect better with you, the MSME entrepreneur. Today's interview is with the CEG Group. Take a look. Thank you very much for speaking with us here on the Leaders of Tomorrow, Mr. Jain. So you come from a background which, you know, you are a civil engineer uh, who has moved into this area of testing and now you work on some of the big, biggest infrastructure projects in the country. Uh, you've done testing for some of the biggest FMCG brands in the country. Did you always know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Right from my childhood when uh, uh, I, I recognized myself that I would like to do something at my own. So immediately after I did my college, um, I opted to do some business. Though I was not having enough money to do business, but um, uh, I got success. How did you overcome that then, uh, not having enough uh, funds to be an entrepreneur? Actually, it's a slow and steady growth. Whenever I got an opportunity, um, I worked hard, I encouraged that opportunity, and I delivered the project. So people started believing in on me. Okay, talk to us about some of the biggest projects that you do in the infrastructure space and then I want to talk to you about, you know, GST, demonetization, as well as what's happening in the infrastructure space in India. In every developing country, infrastructure plays an important role, okay. Uh, and India is a developing country, so there are a lot of opportunities in the country, especially in infrastructure. Uh, we are building now metros and many roads, four lanes, six lane, expressway, and many more. And government is also keen uh, to invest a lot of money in infrastructure. So it's a big, it's a, uh, I think future, uh, uh, India is having a good future if uh, there's a good infrastructure. Okay, just before I come to uh, infrastructure and the need for MSMEs and entrepreneurs to work with an organization like yourself, talk to us about food testing. Is there enough understanding of what is required when it comes to food testing in India? This was my diversified business. When we, uh, we have a sizable organization, so we started diversifying to other businesses. So uh, food testing is a new concept in India. I mean, it, was, it started only five, six years back. Uh, Government is very keen to establish and enforce uh, quality control, in especially in uh, food items. So uh, this is a future. How do you uh, enable companies to overcome these challenges of uh, awareness? Infrastructure is not enough from the government side to enforce the food safety laws. I think government has to work a lot in this field, especially uh, to step to enforce uh, uh, laws in food testing. And because 90% of the food what we eat or what is available in India is not tested. And there are not enough labs available. Government is uh, providing uh, subsidy for this business. Means like when we establish food testing, I got subsidy from the government, uh, thinking that uh, this business will become soon very, very profitable. Most of uh, manufacturer, if they approach to um, laboratory, they are more keen only for certificate, not in the actual uh, 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 means quality of the product and uh, that's why the business is very less. Why should a company work with you? Why should an entrepreneur you know have his or her product tested? It's a compulsory means you cannot eat uh, a food which is adulterated or which is not food, no, fit for... Uh, uh, but you're your, saying that uh, the laws are so lax in India. Laws are, not, laws are there, those are there, enforcement is not there, enforcement is not there. Otherwise, it's very difficult. It's having a very thin organization in the state, say four or five people only in, as a food inspector or uh, 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 authorized by FSSI, working on behalf of government, enforcing for entire state where, where hundreds and hundreds, thousands are, uh, thousand uh, manufacturer or sellers who are dealing in food products but not aware of the uh, where to get tested and why to get tested. How do you uh, enable companies to overcome these challenges of uh, awareness? It's a compulsory means you cannot eat uh, a food which is adulterated. Uh, government has to strengthen this uh, like the enforcement mechanism 
having more uh, enforcement agencies spread it across the country, then only it can happen. So awareness is another problem and enforcement is the biggest challenge. Okay, uh, fair enough. Let's talk about the infrastructure space. Uh, how closely do you work with the government on infrastructure? Uh, very closely. Actually, uh, my company is doing uh, many large size infra infrastructure projects in the country. We are presently responsible for, I think, uh, we are supervising or designing the projects for government costing more than 40,000 crores rupees. Uh, we are consultant for um, Mumbai Metro, um, working for MMRDA, Nagpur Bypass. We are doing projects in Rajasthan, projects in Gujarat, road projects, rail projects. Uh, even we are working in uh, country like uh, Bangladesh, where government of India has given uh, loan, soft loan to government of Bangladesh, where we are working on behalf of the government of India as a consultant, supervising their real projects. So my company is very actively involved in this, all this. Okay, so uh, from uh, you know working so closely with the government, yeah. two or three things that you'd want to advise the people who are watching our show in terms of what it takes to work on such PPP projects with the government. PPP projects, uh, I, uh, actually, uh, this is a model where uh, investment comes from the private side, okay. And uh, most of the PPP projects are successful, in, especially in road sector, but sometimes uh, there were challenges. Uh, now uh, banks have become more conservative. Uh, biggest challenge has come from the, um, from the side like uh, land acquisition problem, environmental clearances, uh, not uh, very, very good preparation in terms of design before award of the project. So there's, there are large, num, huge variation. So these are the challenges in PPP projects. Otherwise, uh, most of the projects awarded um, by the government, by National Highway Authority of India, NHEI, or State PWD, many, many have been completed and tolls. They are being told presently, yes. What about the availability of skilled manpower for a business like yours? I, I think go, uh, present government is taking keen interest for skill development. Uh, that is much required uh, in present scenario. Uh, the person or the student when he comes out from the college uh, is not uh, fit for site work. So there should be some industrial training programs after they finish their graduation. Like a civil engineer, if he comes from IIT, even IITs or NITs or very premier uh, institutions, uh, they also need uh, training. Uh, so, training is required uh, at every level. I think uh, we are going in the right direction. Government is doing enough work, but no, yes, uh, but a skill development is required in country. Speaking of manpower, um, both your daughters as well as your wife are civil engineers and they are actively involved in, in, in the running of your business. Uh, do you, however, see enough women civil engineers? Do you see enough women taking up engineering courses? What do you think is going to change that? Uh, women are still taking more responsibility at home. And the biggest challenge for a woman uh, engineer or any woman entrepreneur or any woman uh, if she's working. Uh, in India, even uh, a girl is working, he, she has to perform her respons responsibilities at home as well as at office or both. Men should come forward, help their better halves, help uh, uh, girls to uh, in at home also. So, uh, and you feel yeah, that will yeah. change that. The, yes, uh, it will change, and uh, just now girls are many girls are becoming entrepreneur, doing very good job, and especially in my family, my two daughters. I am very proud father of my two daughters. Uh, let me go back to my earlier question on the government, and uh, this is uh, uh, my last question to you in terms of GST. How has it impacted your business? How have you as an organization prepared for GST? And uh, how should other organizations that are working so closely with the infrastructure space uh, prepare for GST? Actually, uh, the GST, we know that GST will give big boost to Indian economy. Okay. So at initial phases, there are always challenges. Uh, government is also not very much prepared in terms of software or the manpower, skilled manpower. So uh, the biggest challenge is actually uh, it's, a, it's a learning process. So maybe I think it will take another two couple of months to accustom with this GST law. 
but uh, we are okay with that. We, we don't find any problem. It's a just a tax. So, we used to pay service tax. Now, it's a just name has changed. So, similar, similar way, we'll be paying this service tax, this GS to the government, GS to the government, this for the development of the countries. I, I want to actually, in fact, uh, I want to ask you one more question before we wind down. In an industry like yours, uh, training and constant training, I assume, is crucial. How do you ensure you are training yes. and upskilling your workforce? It's very much required, very much required. You have to update yourself at every moment in this industry because we are doing innovative structures. So, training, continuous training is very much required. And especially in my organization, we have a separate training department, a director training, responsible for in-house training. Even we provide training to outsiders also. We have recently provided training to uh, engineers from Bangladesh and we have provided training on behalf of World Bank to engineers in India. Uh, training is a very, very important component for success of any organization. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. Time for a break. When we come back, we'll turn the spotlight on the construction industry. Just stay tuned. Welcome back with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow and tonight we are putting the spotlight on the construction space. Joy Ambukan, partner of Premier Construction in conversation with Pritam Chivakula, the director of Tridatu Realty. Take a look. Joy, Pritam, thank you both very much for being with us here tonight uh, to talk about what's happening in the real estate space, whether it's commercial, whether it's residential, uh, given, you know, GST, given RERA, so many changes taking place in the industry. And maybe we can start by talking about what's happening in terms of demand, what's happening in the industry, on consumers, on prices because of GST. Uh, because of GST, I don't think so. There's basically much uh, thing uh, difference going on okay. because uh, GST is something like uh, uh, VAT and service tax which has come in a different dress altogether. So we don't think so there's any problem on that. If, uh, if you're doing honest business then I feel so that uh, GST doesn't make any difference for our construction industry as a whole. But at the same time we feel that it is a better thing uh, for us because of uh, the knowledge that uh, we will come to know our previous customer or consumer whoever has taken the VAT amount from me I was not knowing about this thing for uh, maybe almost for a few years now everything will be settled in the same month so it's better for us what about prices though under prices actually case? will come down according to us because uh, previously also we had a hidden expense like excise and octroi which is not now prevailing you have one single pay you make gst one shot maybe cgst and it's divided into two parts but then it is one single thing actually and it is lesser than actually what it was before you know since we're speaking about gst the government is also effective demonetization there is rera uh, demonetization particularly uh, has an impact on your industry more than other industries talk to us about that talk to us about also possibly gst and what you're seeing in terms of an impact so gst obviously uh, is the latest uh, shock that the industry has got uh, when i say a shock it's good in the long term but in the immediate term the consumers are perceiving this to be a price increase in terms of taxes for them. I'm very heartened by what he said that the prices are going to come down because eventually that's the end result of GST. With RERA coming in from the 1st of August when we have to all to register our projects, that confidence deficit which is there will also slowly evaporate. Coming back to demonetization, I think you know, there are so many views about it from our industry perspective. So we really have no impact. Initially, one or two months, obviously, everyone's trying to try and see where the prices are going because of that. But eventually, the good developers have, you know, standard stood out, sorry. And uh, we've had no real impact about demonetization post the three, four months. Okay, yeah. I want to talk on prices. Uh, you were just very briefly talking about prices. We are coming up on a season which I'm sure is going to see the cash registers ringing for real estate developers. Uh, talk to us about the festive season, how entrepreneurs, MSMEs, uh, real estate developers should approach uh, the festive season, what sort of rationale should they use for pricing, how you should undertake your stock keeping, etc. 
So like we see, uh, the last three months have been very good for us. Post April, we've seen a steady upswing in the leads. Inquiries have started to increase. Uh, people who are on the fence have started to close deals. So that's a positive. I think the festive season is going to get the serious consumers back into the market. Uh, and MS MSME shouldn't look at it as an opportunity to increase price or do profiteering out of it. It should look at giving the consumer the right price, the right good, and you know. But what do you do if your sustains. peers are you know offering crash sales? Then what do you do? I always have said that people who offer crash sales are never going to end up pro completing their projects because the cost stack up in the today's market is so steep that if you go beyond a particular discount, you're not going to be able to complete your project. So I don't see the real the serious players in real estate increasing prices so soon. Okay. What about you? I think so that the real estate prices are going to remain as it is. It's difficult for any builder to reduce the price because uh, first thing, cost of construction is always high in Bombay. Added to that, the land cost, the infrastructure cost, whatever is required for the builder to invest interest. in, it yeah, is uh, not so small. It's huge. So the prices, if at all it is getting reduced, it may be because some of the builders or some of the developers are not in a position to sustain. Uh, what is the there is a sluggish market definitely no doubt about it uh, it's because definitely it's because partly because of demonetization partly because of GST there is a confusion remaining all these things will be sorted out and the financial market should come to a steady uh, position in a matter of time maybe in six months time there are the central government is also talking about uh, uh, there will be reforms coming uh, in this GST only for, because everybody has got their own doubts about GST. Uh, even I do have some doubts about GST, which will be cleared out in a matter of time. In fact, uh, the MSME minister did an interview with us saying that transitional period of six to eight months is what MSMEs have to factor in Absolutely. and yeah, things will sure. settle down. So talking of prices, one is the price that the consumer is paying for the, pri for the property. And on the other hand, you have the price that builders are paying when it comes to the input costs. How have input costs over the last few months, how have they fluctuated? And your advice for those who are watching our show, perhaps, you know, trends, I know it's very hard to predict what prices are going to be in the next few months, but what are the trends looking like? You're talking about the finished product price or the material no, the price? No, the material price, input Yeah, costs. material prices, I told you, now, it has to come down because now uh, most of the material that excise has gone. So that, uh, that advantage of that excise, basically, now the basic price will be the ma uh, manufacturing cost. There is no other tax in between. So before it was like manufacturing cost, then you add the excise, then you come, it comes to me, and I pay the uh, VAT, so VAT, and uh, it goes to, it comes as a final product. Now, the basic price of the material has to come down by the uh, di whatever difference of uh, uh, excise is, and then when you add the GST, automatically the according to me, almost all the components what is used in the construction industry will have a reduction in the basic price thereby there will be a reduction in the basic cost of construction that's always good to hear i am not i am not talking about uh, the gst involved further always it was there so whatever is there it's further to uh, it's the end consumer and for me i have to always look into the basic cost because uh, whatever i am not paying a rupee from my pocket I am doing the business, of course I will be paying my income tax, nothing more than that. Whatever GST I pay, I get a set off, I collect it from my client and pay it off, pay the difference. So for me there is no difference, but as a whole there will be a reduction in the basic cost for me. That's okay. what I am sure about. Okay. Speaking of prices, um, you know, you started the conversation by saying that there is going to be a reduction in prices. The fear though was that there could be an increase in prices. So it comes down to perhaps educating your customer. How do, yeah, how do you educate your customers? So, what is to happen in Mumbai, especially, was because of the demand supply gap in the past, we never bothered about marketing our projects. We never bothered about the consumer's feelings. We said, this is the price, this is the plan, you like it to buy it, otherwise I have another guy behind you who is ready to buy it. For the last five years, the change has happened that there is no other consumer behind you. You are the only one. So I need to give you all the information that you seek out of me. In our industry, we are showing our consumers what we are putting into our buildings, what are the finishes that we are giving you, and how they are going to benefit them over the ownership period. Each developer to himself, but we are educating our consumers firstly about taxes, secondly about the entire buying process, thirdly we are telling, giving him good service for a change in our industry, and lastly we are telling him not as much about the technical aspects about his industry, but at least 
the consumer interface of the quality. All right. Gentlemen, thank you both very much then for being thank with us for here uh, tonight to talk about some of the things MSMEs and entrepreneurs should really be looking forward to when it comes to the construction and the real estate space. Thank, thank you, you Sunanda. Thank, thank you. you. Out of time on this episode of Leaders of Tomorrow. If you have anything you want to say to us, do email us at leadersoftomorrowtimesgroup.com. On social media, tweet at me at sunanda underscore j or lot underscore et now. You can also reach us on our Facebook page, Leaders of Tomorrow on et now, or call us on that number you see on your screen. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.